This conference will now be recorded. Hello guys, welcome back. So now here in this session, I'm going to show you guys how to configure Dunning program. So we'll see practically how the configurations. Now here, so you need to log in here to SAP and then how to configure Dunning guys use a transaction code FDMP. Press enter. So here already multiple uh, procedures are created, but anyway, we have to create our own procedure. Okay, and as I told you, like of course, like uh, company code wise, different different procedures are going to be created in the sense you need to configure Dunning program. Why? Because uh, different different requirement will be there, right? Requirement in the sense now let's suppose for Tata Motor first of all click on new procedure So what is the code a 48 code? We are going to give for this running procedure So let's suppose our uh, you give like pm00 itself. I'm going to give here Okay, and here A description supposed to be given now Dunning interval in days so what we have to give guys Dunning interval interval in days if you guys are able to remember in the previous session i told you that let's suppose if you have to send a reminder later so for this one like this already become overdue by a margin of 25 days right so Dunning interval in days means like first of all we are going to i'll just do one thing Dunning interval in days right and then then just just wait for a second guys just wait for a second this conference will now be recorded okay so sorry guys i got a call in between so anyway the video was paused so uh, like there won't be any gap now here so we were talking about uh dunning interval in days right now before that dunning level first of all i'll explain dunning level then you guys will be uh, then i'll explain this dunning interval in days so dunning level means first of all now this reminder let's suppose we are going to send a reminder later to the customer so now here the question is how many reminders are going to be sent to a customer so it could be like two reminder three reminder four reminder eight reminder right so there should be some limitations right so now here let's suppose if the client is saying that Tata motor says like three reminder is the maximum one or four reminder. So that is going to be given where that is that is going to be given where in Dunning level. Dunning level means how many reminders? So three reminder or four reminder, it could be anything. Or five reminder. So now here we are going to give three. Now there is one more thing during interview there will be a question that how many maximum reminder like what is the maximum dunning level which we can enter here in SAP what should be the maximum level so I'll tell you guys now look at here what is the length of this field right the length of this field is one digit only one digit only and what is the highest number of one digit guys of course it is nine of course it is going to be what is the highest number it is nine so here the maximum dunning level will be what it should be nine not more than this it, it cannot be like 10 11 12 nothing the maximum dunning level means it is going to be nine only this is what is uh, what is a acceptable here in sap guys apart from this there is no any other if the, let's suppose if somebody asked like uh, uh, if i have to send 10 reminder not possible okay so now here maximum is nine but generally uh, nine reminder who is going to send nine time reminder because in three or four reminder itself we will come to know that customer is there uh, in the mood of making payment or not right so here three four uh, three four in some of the cases even two reminder also i've seen like if you talk about my implementations whatever implementations i have until now or whichever project i have worked upon so two three four this is what i have seen so now here i have given three reminder now again the question is so now i'll come back here on this dunning interval in days 
so dunning inter interval in days uh, like means what so if if three reminders like we are going to send so it doesn't mean that first reminder I have sent today and second reminder I'm going to send tomorrow and third reminder day after tomorrow. No, we have to give some time also, right? There should be some gap in between, in between this reminder, right? There should be some interval between the first reminder and second reminder, right? So interval in the, in the sense like a break supposed to be there. Today I've sent and tomorrow again I'm going to send the next reminder that where is the time to the customer to, you know, reply and all, right? So now, what should be the gap? What should be the interval between the first reminder and second reminder? Say for example, 10 days or 15 days or 20 days. So this is going to be given here in dining interval in days. And apart from this, what we are going to enter, guys, there is one more thing, grace period and all I'll explain, guys. Don't worry. First of all, we'll what you say, set up the procedure and then I'll quote the example and then I'll come back here. So now here. <coughs> So, or else, like if we will give the grace period also. This days in area, what is this days in area, guys? Once I uh, generate the letter there, I'll show you. So, here, so first of all, like dunning interval in days, 10 days, in the sense, like whatever the gap is there from between one letter to second letter, that is, and dunning level means how many letters are going to be sent to the customer, how many reminders. Grace period is already explained in the previous introduction session, guys. So first of all, like here, what we have given dunning level. So and then dunning interval. Interval. So dunning interval is 10 days. And grace period. That is like let's suppose five days. So that I have given five days, right? Now, apart from this, nothing else, guys. This holiday calendars and all, like let's suppose if, if uh, grace period is five days, we have given, right? So in this in in this five days, it means we are saying that once the invoices are going to be due, it becomes due today. So today itself, I'm not going to escalate this things to the customer. I'll wait for five days, right? Now, this five days means what? Are we going to give like overall five days or five working days? I'm talking about. So this is also if, if like Tata Motor sales department is going to discuss with the customer initially itself these all agreement will be there with the customers that or Tata Motor uh, will have a particular like they have already decided a rule that okay we are going to give only five days as a grace uh, what is a period to the every customers and that to five working day. So five working day means what guys in this five days let's suppose continuously five days if you are going to come in between three days holidays is there then what will happen, right? So that is supposed to be excluded. Now how SAP will come to know that this three days, so and on, so and so that holiday is there. So for that, what is happening guys from HR side, like HR, your HR consultant is going to define a calendar. So in that all these things will be there. So that calendar is going to be, that calendar is going to be assigned here. So generally, if you have to assign any calendar we are having, we are going to assign the standard calendar that is, zero and you can assign or else you just keep it blank itself because even if you're going to assign this calendar also uh, there is no much impact right but yes here you have to apply a check mark standard transactions means whichever the standard transactions are there that is going to system is going to check the whatever the transactions are going to be posted right so system will check all the transactions and apart from this here okay so now here reference dunning project procedure for text now reference dunning procedure for text guys generally what is happening look at here this dunning text here on dunning text what is happening guys in dunning text generally we are going to assign the dunning form right at the same time let's suppose we have if, if you want to take a reference of a dunning what to say uh, text which is already defined for a different company code then you can give that reference here we are going to give that dunning procedure but generally in real time we don't give anything here because for every company code a different different text will be there guys so if you press enter automatically system is going to copy the running procedure which i have given i think it is gone so i'll have to log in again so if you talk about the configurations guys look at here the configuration is a matter of seconds matter of few seconds right Configuration is a matter of few seconds only. 
but if you talk about the explanations it may take 30 minutes 40 minutes 50 minutes as well fbnp transaction code and here this is already you are already maintaining okay so since the connectivity got broken right so system is saying that you are already maintaining this dining procedure it means it is locked by me only so look at here new entry is not appearing so what is the solution guys uh, when you guys are going to do the practice let's suppose and if you're having most likely you guys will be having the online uh, server so in that case what is happening uh this this message even you also can get you are already maintaining this dynamic procedure in between like if connectivity issues are there right so in that case what you have to do guys go to again sm12 and delete the lock <coughs> press enter here and then delete even like i was supposed to delete my lock itself but no issues this is the practice server itself, right? So now use FBMP once again. Sorry, I have to use slash and FBMP because we are already there in one screen. Now look at here, new procedure came. So team double zero, and here I have given like uh, uh, how many days interval, guys? 10 days. And how many level in the sense, how many reminders? Three reminders. Apart from this grace period means, let's suppose five days, I'm going to give as a grace period. And then check mark here, all the standard transactions are going to be included here. And then I told, don't give anything here in reference field guide. You press enter, so automatically the system is going to copy this current running procedure itself in the reference field. Now what will happen, the next one is, you need to click here on dunning level just to just press enter here okay so here days in area okay you try to understand this concept guys days in area means uh i'll i'll tell you now the days in area generally how to explain this okay i'll i'll show you guys like once the letter is going to be generated once the letter is going to be generated there what will happen guys this days in area is going to appear so at that point of time, if I'm going to explain, then you guys will be having perfect understanding. Right now, what is happening? Look at your days in area, it's showing 5, 15, and 25. What does it mean? 5, 15, 25. I said, like, if the if let's suppose, okay, if, if let's suppose if any item become due today, right? If it is become due today then when it is going to be like when we are going to send the reminder so zero means today plus five right so zero plus five it means on fifth day on fifth day the first reminder is supposed to be sent and then what is happening guys five plus ten ten days gap supposed to be there so on 15th day, second reminder is supposed to be sent. And then 15 plus 10 on 25th day, third reminder is supposed to be sent. Why I have given 0 plus 5, guys? Because we, we are having 5 days grace period also. So let's suppose this line item, it becomes due today. But when we are going to send the first reminder later, guys, the, on 5 days we have to wait, right? So on this day, first reminder, this day, second reminder, and this day, third reminder. Practically, I'm going to show you guys, don't worry. So this is what, this is what it is shown here, right? First level on this day, second, this day, and third, this day. The more details, as I told you, once I run this Dunning program and all, once the letter is getting generated, there I'll show you again which uh, I'll, I'll quote the example live example we post the invoice and then i'll show you so right now configurations we have to do guys after configurations the testing is going to be now here charges click on charges and then give your currency whatever the currency is there that you can give your company code currency you're going to get now so here charges means what guys let's suppose if we are going to 
uh, if the customer has not made payment on time, this is why uh, this reminder is going to be generated and it is going to be sent to the customer, guys. So, are you going to charge any penalty as well because they are like they have failed to make payment on time? So, how much penalty we can charge? Right? It's a kind of fine amount you can say, or it's like it's a penalty you can say. So, how much you are going to charge? So, it depends. It depends my, means if you talk about my current client. So they are charging small amount only. Small amount means they are saying that okay, uh, whatever the courier charges are there, that is going to be that is going to be so that we have given here. Or else it depends upon client. Even they can charge a certain amount. So how much amount is going to be charged, guys? That is going to be explained. That is going to be disclosed by your client itself. I am going to give certain amount. So now I have given 50. 50 means what? 50 means 50. INR here, whatever your currency is there, if you have minted USD currency, then 50 USD, 50 GBP, AUD, whatever currency is there, right? So now, charges means again, you will be having options like during first reminder, how much? During second reminder, how much? During third reminder, how much? So here, you have to get first, second, and third. This is the level, right? 50 and then 100 and then let's suppose 200 like that we can give okay so generally if you talk like once you have to configure this direct procedure let's suppose in real time in that case what will happen guys these details we are not going to provide by ourselves we have to take input from clients in the sense like from tata motor whoever the uh, what do you say from tata motor finance department finance team uh, is going to designate a particular person to whom we have to get all these details and all right that person is going to provide all the details so now what will happen guys so here we are going to you have to ask you have to ask each and everything right you have to ask each and everything that okay you tell me that during first reminder are you going to charge any amount during second reminder are you going to charge any amount, amount or during third reminder so like and how much amount you are going to charge same amount or like different different amounts so that is going to be actually by your client now just 50 100 and 200 right even in percentage also you can but percentage means like let's suppose if the invoice amount is more and your percentage we are going to give so in that case charges dunning charges even like if the invoice amount is 50 lakh and here one person he has specified so that is also going to be huge right so generally it depends upon client whatever they are going to whatever they are they are what to say uh, as per their inputs we have to configure now so here these, these are the charges i have specified now again there should be some restrictions also restrictions means what about the charges? Let's suppose if the invoice amount itself is pretty small and on that you are going to charge certain penalty which is almost 20% of the invoice amount or 30% of the invoice amount. Is it feasible? This is not feasible at all. This is not like good at all. So here we are going to specify certain restrictions. Restrictions means let's suppose if the invoice amount is 500 or more than 500 then only these charges are applicable or else i'll specify a different amount here guys i'll specify 1000 okay if the invoice amount is 1000 or more than 1000 then only these charges are applicable or else or else if it is less than less than 1000 then these charges are not applicable press enter now then your minimum amount minimum amount is we are going to specify again here you have to second and third reminder right so here guys now minimum amount like if you are going to run a dunning program right so dunning program and here what is happening guys system found that whatever the overall outstanding amount is there that is quite less it is like only 1000 it is only 500 so why to run this dunning program for the sake of a small amount guys right so here you can provide certain restrictions that okay this this uh dunning procedure is going to be run by system only if the overall outstanding balance is equal or more than this limits this amount right so generally in real time what is happening guys since the customer will always they'll be having lots of overdue items and all 
so generally such kind of criteria like we are going to specify a small amount here right but generally such kind of uh, situation never come never come in the sense like because every company which have is having lots of invoices like let's suppose some of the invoice become due today this invoice is going to be due over this is going to be overdue tomorrow again and multiple other overdue invoices also will be there right so and multiple invoices are going to be overdue in coming what is the future and all so but still you can give a small amount like okay this is if this is the total amount and if they like let, let's suppose overall outstanding balance is going to exceed this then only system is going to run this so a small amount is going to specify here guys now i'll come back on running text so give your company code and press enter so look at here guys you need to keep here you just give your company code click on new company code so here you give your company code once again and then look at here this is our company code you can specify dunning area and uh, level it's okay you can specify check mark here and then save it control s okay you just do one thing guys click on back button and then you click on yes because here now here it is going to be saved okay and then then what guys so again we came back now once again you need to click on dunning text press enter now here you have to give so this is level one level two and level three and here we are going to assign here we are going to assign what guys here we are going to assign a dunning form okay now so here you have to assign the dunning form which dunning form is going to be assigned guys so as i told you whenever whenever uh let's suppose whenever a letter is getting generated dunning letter is getting generated right sorry whenever we are going to run the dunning program then what will happen a letter is going to be generated a reminder letter is going to be generated automatically by sap okay so now how dunning letter is going to be generated guys so that is based on this form only which we are going to assign here we are going to assign some certain form here now the question is how to develop this form who is going to develop this form how we are going to get this form here right so i'll tell you guys now in sap so everything cannot be done by you people you guys are functional consultant right you are a finance consultant finance consultant is a functional consultant if like whatever other consultant is there like sd consultant mm consultant these all are functional consultant apart from this we are having one more person one more like module called abap this is called a bap module so what about these people what exactly they are going to do so they are going to do the development which development guys if any development is report related let's suppose if any uh, reports are supposed to be uh, required to be developed multiple standard reports are there into sap guys it doesn't mean that it is going to meet the requirements so we are having uh, like we can customize also the report as per client requirement so who is going to do this uh, development guys it is going to be done by a web consultant right likewise we are talking about dunning form so dunning form who is going to develop this dunning form guys so this is going to be developed by your ABAP consultant itself form in the sense like there will be like let's suppose they are going to develop a form here multiple things will be there in this form like let's suppose first of all here like logo will be there client logo will be there then here phone number right then the fax number right mm -hmm. then email id or else like complete address you can say or email id or else like at bottom here this is called footer so here also they can specify the corporate office address and all here they are going to specify dear customer this is to notify or else like so dear customer in the sense like the customer name supposed to appear here in this field right certain uh fixed text is going to appear so now if you talk about this logo or his phone number fax number email id 
for every reminder letter, these things are going to be fixed only. Okay, this is a fixed value. Now, if you talk about the customer name, so now what is happening, guys? How system is going to bring this customer name? So customer name is going to be updated by this is going to be taken by system uh, from certain table in SAP, whichever transactions we are posting, whichever configurations we are going, uh, we are posting guys, these, these things are going to be stored somewhere, somewhere where it is going to be stored guys, it is going to be stored in a particular table. So I think if I go in details, then we are going to distract uh, like the topic. We are going to deviate from this turning topic and all. So I will not uh, explain. I will not say much about this table and all. I'll record a separate lecture. I'll try to record a separate lecture on this table and all later in the upcoming what to say this one uh, lectures right now. Right now we'll uh, talk about this Dunning form. So Dunning form is what guys it is. It is a development object. It is supposed to be developed. So development means like here, let's suppose I said like certain fixed line will be there. Like let's suppose here customer, right? And let's suppose this is so notify you that okay, XYZ, whatever it is. So now this line will be there in every letter. Right. This line will be the, in every, every letter. This is going to be so. This is called fixed contents, right? So in in a BAP language, it is called like these things are going to be hard coded. It is going to be hard coded. Hard coded means in the form itself, in Dunning form itself, it is going to be written by a BAP consultant. So once the system is going to trigger this form, then these this fixed text will be there for every letter. But if you talk about here the customer name, multiple customers are there, guys. So in every letter, different different names are supposed to be appeared. So how this name is coming from, guys? For that, a web consultant is going to write certain logic, okay? And based on the logic, system is going to trigger the name from SAP. So here there is no fixed, nothing is fixed, right? Here only the fixed contents is there. Here also, let's suppose again they are going to specify some five lines or. Uh, six line standard contents will be there. So those things are hard coded one in the sense it is fixed contents, right? But here the customer name is going to be It is like for every letter different different customer name will be there. But here these part this is called like Body part right letter body So this letter body this letter body will be like this this text will be fi fixed only now here what will happen guys here we are going to specify generally i was supposed to make it like a little bit uh, it was like here there should be more and more space right but anyway noises so here what is happening fixed contents will be there and then here we are going to specify which invoice got overdue so that invoice number also supposed to appear amount also supposed to appear it become overdue by a margin of how many days that is also supposed to appear so now this is this cannot be hard coded guys why because for every letter a different different value is going to appear so for such kind of things what is happening guys a back consultant is going to write certain logic from which table it is going to come how system is going to find out which invoices like is going to be so there's some some logic is going to be written by those people right and a back is again it's a very huge module guys from technical side isn't it and at this point of time, you can be expert of only one thing. You can't be expert of each and everything, right? And even in real time also, like once you become a consultant, uh, that is why the roles and responsibilities are segregated, right? You're working as a finance consultant. Somebody is working as a MM consultant. Somebody is working as a SD consultant. Likewise, somebody is working as a web consultant. So everybody is like in every uh, module, guys, lots of lots of things are there to explore and lots of lots of things are there to learn even if you spend 20 years also still uh, as I told you in the previous section also that we can say that I become experts because lots of countries facing setting settings are also there right and SAP like every time they keep on adding some new new features and all so that also you need to update it if required generally if you are the part of support project then most likely you need to upgrade your knowledge is only if your client is switching from one version to other other versions or else I've seen there are multiple people 
who is sitting in the same project for last eight years. I'm having one example where there, there is a client, there is a, uh, what do you say, there is a, one consultant is there for last 12 years, he's the part of same project. Because that project is there uh, with my organizations, right? Almost like uh, for last 12, 15 years, they are taking support from, uh, what do you say, uh, my, what do you say, uh, company itself. And, and, and that guy, like initially itself, he joined, he become the part of those projects and still he is working in the same, in the, in the same project, right? And still that client is using the oldest version itself. They have not like uh, gone for the upgradations and all. So what about the knowledge? He doesn't require to upgrade. If, if, if he is like looking for the change and all in that case, of course, people are going to may ask the upgraded things and all. But since he is the part of that project itself, so now he is quite comfortable. Why? Because upgradations are not required. Later on, if the client is uh, decided to upgrade further, then uh, of course, new functionalities are going to be added. So in that case, he also need to upgrade. So for that, what will happen, guys? Again, uh, whichever company, let's suppose if he is working in Infosys, IBM or whichever, then a KT session is going to be conducted, right? In the sense like uh, some senior consultant will be coming from different project and these people will give some KT and all and they're going to upgrade. So anyway, guys, I diverted, I think I deviated from this one. So what I'm saying, guys, uh, form is going to be developed by a web consultant and that form is going to be assigned here, right? So I will just do one thing. Uh, is it like gone again or it's there? No, it's there. So click on banning text. And then here, uh, you assign a form. So just do one thing. Anyway, click here. I'm going to get a form. So I'm going to use standard form. Okay, we are not having it. Uh, what do you say? This double click here. Yes, I'm going to use this form. Okay, I'm going to use this form. So this is a standard form given by SAP. Generally in real time also what happens guys, if the consultant has to start up their uh, development. So in that case, most likely they just take the reference of already like predefined form. They are going to take the reference. They will copy that and then in that they started doing changes. Most likely that is what like I have observed right everybody are having their different way of uh, working guys right but most likely they will take the reference of the existing form and they'll copy it and they are going to and then they are going to start their development so that what will happen guys they can save some time or else if they're starting from scratch it means it's going to take too much time so now here in uh, this this form is going to be assigned here okay in all three levels now there might be a question which question guys the question is the same form i have assigned in the this level one level two and level three so it means the same contents or same letter is going to be printed uh, during like all three uh, what do you say this one during all three uh, level guys no it's not like that when we are going to same only one single form is going to be uh, what do you say uh, developed by your web consultant but in that itself like if if we are going to if you run this stunning program and if the first letter got generated then the form will be having different text and different words to this one whereas during second reminder again it is going to be written over there itself this is the second reminder third reminder so changes will be there that i'll show you guys practically that i'll show you practically so here what you have to do guys you just so what we have done we have assigned the form and now save it so this is how you have to define your dunning procedure guys this is how you have to define the dunning procedure now what next so after defining this dunning procedure you have to assign this dunning procedure to where guys so it is going to be assigned to the vendor master direct sorry customer master directly Okay, you have to assign this dunning procedure to the customer master. So when uh, like uh, so what will happen here guys now generally whenever we are going to run the uh, what do you say dunning program dunning program and all system is going to trigger this dunning procedure from customer master itself. I'll just do one thing. XD02. XD02. 
right? So what is our customer? Let me check it. Here the company called TM00. Press enter. Where to assign this dining procedure, guys? Click on company code data. And here we are having correspondence. So in this field, we are going to assign the dining procedure. Which dining procedure? TM00. Okay, that's it. So now what we have done, guys, we have assigned the dynamic procedure against the customer mastery. Now what next, guys? The next one is testing part. It means we have to post invoices and we'll run this dynamic pro program at all and we'll see how the letters are going to be generated. So again, I'll just uh, create some uh, scenarios and then we'll run this dynamic program. This is how you guys will be having understanding simply if I run that, uh, what do you say, dining program, we'll see like how system is going to calculate the page in uh, area, like uh, how system is going to, uh, what do you say, consider this grace days and all these all things we are going to see in next session. So next session is the testing part. So that's all in this session, guys.